Okay, 1999, all over the state of Idaho, this rather ominous billboard starts turning up on roadsides across the state. Should public television promote the homosexual lifestyle to your children? Think about it. Never put up a billboard with a message that provocative that ends in a question mark that also has a lot of blank white space on it. Uh, this is what I th happened, I think, in Idaho Falls. Uh, but somewhere in Idaho, somebody answered the question in spray paint in a way that the billboard funders probably did not want. Should public TV promote the homosexual lifestyle to your children? Yes! An unauthorized spray paint addition to the billboard there. That was 1999. The man who helped pay for those billboards in Idaho in 1999 is now a national finance co-chair of the Mitt Romney for President campaign. His name is Frank Vandersloot. He runs a company called Melaleuca, and he is one of the richest men in Idaho, uh, which ends up mattering a lot in Idaho politics. Do you remember when Larry Craig, uh, the Republican senator, got caught with the wide stance in that airport bathroom? Let me be clear, I am not gay, I never have been gay. Larry Craig, emphatically not gay, uh, left the United States Senate anyway uh, and was replaced by another Idaho Republican named James Risch. Uh, Mr. Risch, at the, that point, the state's lieutenant governor, rented the private jet of Frank Vandersloot uh, to fly around the state in 2008 in his successful campaign to replace Larry Craig in the Senate. Uh, Mr. Vandersloot comes up a lot in Idaho politics, and now he is not only a national finance co-chair of the Mitt Romney for President campaign, he's also directly held fundraisers for Mr. Romney, he has donated to the super PAC supporting Mr. Romney, uh, as well as to the Romney for President campaign. Um, a few years after he helped finance the homosexual lifestyle billboards around Idaho, Mr. Vandersloot also got very, very involved in an award-winning investigative series published by a small Idaho newspaper called The Post Register. The series started uh, with a tip about a child molestation case at a local Boy Scout camp. Following that lead, the paper published evidence that Boy Scouts officials and Mormon church officials had been warned about child molesters within local Boy Scout troops. They had known about it, but had kept them in the organization and ultimately facilitated their further access to kids. Uh, it was a brutal and disturbing investigation that, of course, went right at the most powerful pillars of that community. Uh, for that reporting, the Scripps Howard Foundation awarded the newspaper their award for distinguished service to the First Amendment. The reporter on the story, a young man named Peter Zuckerman, won the Livingston Award for his reporting on that series. It's a prize that recognizes the nation's best journalists under the age of 35. Now, part of the response to that reporting from that little newspaper in Idaho Falls uh, was this. As you can see, it's sort of typeset to make it look like it was part of the newspaper. Um, but this is actually an ad. It was a full-page ad run by... Frank Vandersloot, now a national finance co-chair of the Mitt Romney campaign. The ad was placed to criticize the newspaper for publishing the story. And it and others like it um, were published in the newspaper that had aired the series in the first place. This particular version of the ad went on at some length about the fact that the reporter, uh, young Mr. Zuckerman, is gay. It described him as a, quote, declared homosexual, and it also described him as individually biased as a reporter. We covered this story a few months ago, back in February, uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, first, biggest picture here, while there have always been campaign donors and politically influential campaign donors, in this post-Citizens United era, we are now in a new phase in American politics where gazillionaires can give unlimited amounts of money to support candidates. And that unlimited spending by people with essentially unlimited resources creates a whole new category of influential rich person in politics, like we've never really had before. So now, in this post-Citizens United world, getting to know your candidates, in many cases, means getting to know your candidate's gazillionaire. Frank Vandersloot is one of Mitt Romney's key gazillionaires, and his politics are therefore relevant for understanding Mitt Romney's politics, his campaign, and his candidacy. But more interesting than just Frank Vandersloot's politics um, is how he functions as a political actor, which has mostly, up until this point, been in Idaho, but it's starting to feel like it may now be nationwide. I mean, it is a basic truth of politics that when you start behaving as a political actor, you get discussed in a political context. If you're involved, for example, in putting up billboards, raising the specter of the homosexual lifestyle all around your state, and you're taking out full-page ads, attacking the reporting of local newspapers, if you become a national finance co-chair of a presidential campaign, you have made yourself a political figure. And people discussing politics on those issues that you've been engaging in will therefore be discussing you. 
that basic dyad of public figures getting public scrutiny is something that Frank Vandersloot deals with differently than most other people who have chosen to become political public figures. It's not just that young reporter at that local newspaper in Idaho. When people have blogged about Mr. Vandersloot and his politics, they have frequently found themselves facing copyright infringement lawsuits for doing things like posting the photo of him that is publicly displayed on his company's website. In 2007, this lefty-leaning Idaho blog, which is called 43rd State Blues, they posted a blog entry critical of Mr. Vandersloot's politics. The blog says they then received a letter from Mr. Vandersloot's lawyers telling them to take that blog post down within 24 hours or they'd find themselves sued. The blog did take down the post. They did not want to be sued, but when they posted a copy of the lawyer's letter in order to explain to their readers why they had taken down a blog post that had previously been there, Mr. Vandersloot then sued them. They sued them for copyright infringement, for posting the letter. And so when we reported on Mr. Vandersloot in February, when we reported on Mr. Vandersloot and his politics and his role in the Romney campaign and his history of doing this kind of thing, surprise, we got contacted by Mr. Vandersloot and his lawyers. First, they requested that we take down uh, the web version of the segment that we did about Mr. Vandersloot. They asked that we remove it from the internet. No. Uh, they also tried to insist that their written communications to NBC News about this matter were confidential and not for publication. Of course, we didn't enter into any sort of confidentiality agreement with them. You're writing a letter to a news organization. With all due respect, we can do anything we want with that. That's the whole free part of the free press. Ultimately, the specific thing they wanted to criticize about our coverage is that they say when they published that full page ad about that young reporter at that Idaho newspaper and went on at length about that young reporter being gay while they were attacking him for being biased, they say that was not outing him as we described it in our broadcast because, the fact, because of the fact that that reporter, uh, because of the fact that that reporter is gay had previously been discussed on an Idaho radio station and in a blog post that he had previously written. Now that is true. It should also be noted that for most people who read this local newspaper but did not listen to that one Idaho radio show, Frank Vandersloot, in all likelihood, was the person breaking the news about this young man's sexual orientation by printing it in that paper in that ad. But in this back and forth between Mitt Romney's national finance co-chair and his lawyers, uh, we do actually have some news to break, which is that he is actually apologizing. Uh, I have the apology statement right here. Joining us now for the interview is the man to whom Mr. Vandersloot is apologizing, Peter Zuckerman, uh, who in 2005 is a reporter at Idaho's Post Register newspaper um, and now is an independent journalist. He has a new book actually coming out called Buried in the Sky. That'll be out soon. Peter, thank you for joining us. Let me read you this statement um, uh, from Frank Vandersloot. I am a strong supporter of the argument that gay and lesbian people should. This is the wrong statement. This is the wrong statement. Oh, we've got it here. We got it. Ah, here we go. Handed the wrong thing. Quote, we believe that Peter Zuckerman is a good man who did a poor job reporting the facts on an important story in 2005. The entire community was buzzing about Mr. Zuckerman's sexual orientation after a local radio talk show had talked about it for days. We came to Mr. Zuckerman's defense and chastised the talk show for bringing his sexual orientation into the debate. I apologize for any personal pain that he suffered because of our involvement. That was not our intent. Um, obviously, that statement ends um, with an apology, uh, but there is a lot in that. Let me just ask your reaction to that statement first. Wow. Um, it is a start. It doesn't quite ring true to my experience. Um, what was the impact in your life when Frank Vandersloot ran these full page ads in your newspaper in Idaho uh, talking about the fact that, that you were gay and, and attacking your reporting? There was a tremendous impact on me both personally and professionally. Um, personally, it was really hard when um, my boyfriend at the time came home and said, um, I don't have my job anymore. Um, they know I'm gay. They know about my relationship with you. They don't want me there anymore. And it was really hard for him. He actually got sick soon afterwards and was basically in bed for about a month. And I didn't know how we were going to pay the bills. Um, it was really hard when um, people started leaving notes on my doorstep, when somebody kept calling in the middle of the night threatening to rape me with his handgun. Um, it was, I mean, that was really terrible. And then um, 
professionally, it became much harder to do my job. Um, because, yeah, Idaho Falls was buzzing about my sexual orientation. And, you know, when I tried to talk to people they would, who were on my beat, they would say things like, oh, well, I can't talk to you. You're homosexual. We don't associate with that. Did so. all of this happen um, because you were being discussed on a local radio show? Or did this happen not until your name appeared in this ad that was run by Mr. Vandersloot? This did not happen until my name appeared in the ad. When he says that he wasn't outing you, that everybody knew already, you dispute that contention? Um, I absolutely dispute that contention. Um, the Idaho Falls Post Register was the place I worked. It was the colleagues I worked with. It was the people on my beat. Um, yeah, a handful of people knew I'm gay. Um, my boyfriend knew I'm gay. Um, my parents knew I'm gay. My boss knew I'm gay. But um, most, I, I hadn't told anybody on my beat that I'm gay, and for good reason, because I was worried that they wouldn't talk to me. And um, I feel like the worst part of this isn't so much that, um, that you know, I was harassed and such, but was that this was a really important story that needed to get out there. Mm -hmm. That um, this was a story about child molesters and the Boy Scouts. And it was about, you know, trying to protect kids from these kind of pedophiles. And by making it so hard for me to gather information, it actually really limited the story. Um, there's a lot more to that story that I was not able to get, and this was a major contributor for one of the reasons I couldn't get it. Mr. Vandersloot um, is a political figure of national importance now, uh, as national finance co-chair for Mitt Romney's presidential campaign. Um, having been in Idaho, how would you describe... Um, I guess his political role, his political presence uh, in the community, and do you think it's reasonable to try to extrapolate that to what uh, to, to a national level? Absolutely reasonable. Um, he is probably the wealthiest person in Idaho, certainly the wealthiest person in eastern Idaho, mm -hmm. and he's had his hand in um, a lot of campaigns, um, oftentimes as a donor. Um, I don't know how active he is in actually deciding what the message is. Um, but he is also a pretty well-respected person in Idaho Falls among people who are, you know, really extremely conservative. Um, and what, what does this say about Romney, I think, is um, this isn't a story about, you know, being gay or straight. It's, it's about who the president um, leans on when he needs money, who the president, you know, seeks advice from. Um, you know, it's about who does the president hire? Because who you hire is one of the most important things a president does. And um, we need to know who he's hiring as his national finance co-chair. In, in, in the reporting that you did in Idaho, in, in any other reporting that you have done, have you ever dealt with somebody who was as interventionist in terms of trying to control the coverage that a publication that you were involved in was actually standing behind? Not quite like this. I mean, I've never had somebody run paid ads in the newspaper I'm working at um, trying to discredit me as a person. Yeah. Uh, Peter Zuckerman, a former Post Register reporter, uh, was an award-winning reporter for that series that attracted so much attention. Um, I will say, as a way of thanking you for being here, that you have a new book coming out, which is called Buried in the Sky, the Extraordinary Story of the Sherpa Climbers on K2's Deadliest Day, which obviously has nothing to do with this subject whatsoever, but congratulations on that. Oh, well, thank and you. I worked for, very hard. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. All right. I should note that we invited Frank Vandersloot uh, to join us a number of times. Uh, he declined our requests. He did, however, speak with members of my staff today off the record, but he would not agree to speak on the record or to come on the air. Uh, in addition to the statement that he provided to us in regards to Mr. Zuckerman, Mr. Vandersloot also provided us one other statement uh, regarding his involvement in those homosexual lifestyle billboards, those billboards that were put up in Idaho that he helped to finance. You can find both of those statements from Mitt Romney's National Finance Coach Chair Frank Vandersloot posted at our blog, which is mattoblog.com. Uh, and Mr. Vandersloot, if, if you are watching, you are still very, very welcome to come on the show. You have my number. All right.